Hi everybody, so a few months back, like four or five months back, I don't really remember, I designed this PET machine, I would give it a name PET 1.0 and it was a machine, it was functioning really well but I got few concerns with this machine given that I didn't have any video ideas so I thought why not upgrade this machine and make it more better. So after addressing all the people who have downloaded that design and make their own so they had like few complaints regarding the wooden part of it so given that i was using a 300 millimeter long wood piece to it but many people like they don't have like wood of that size or they have to cut it you know you have to put in like extra work regarding three other than 3d printing all those parts and getting all those electronics so i thought why not make it 100 percent 3d printable and make it more compact and more smaller and more lighter weight and given that the last design was kind of unsafe too if you put your hand down below you might uh, touch something and you might get shocked too so that was like kind of scary too so i thought why not make a better design like the design which is more compact easy to carry and much more reliable and 100% 3D printed. So this design gonna be 100% 3D printed. So after considering all the complaints that I got, or the, or you guys are not the complaint exactly, but all the reviews that I got from that machine, all the pro problem the people were facing, and all the question they asked me. So I, not, why, I thought why not make a new video and redesign this machine so that you can easily produce a filament from your plastic water bottles or whatever or coca-cola bottle whatever bottle you want to use so let's begin this video and there are a few changes that can might improve your filament quality too so let's begin this video Okay, so I have this 0.4 millimeter of E3D wall cannon nozzle, and the problem is you need a diameter of at least 1.7 millimeter in order to make a 1.7. Given that I don't have 1.7 millimeter of drill bit in order to make that size of hole, I'm going with a 2 millimeter of drill bit, and that wouldn't be a problem as I tried in the past. And 2 millimeter of PET filament works fine, I would say. Okay, so after drilling a 2mm hole in nozzle, there are few non-3D printable components that we need in order to make this thing work. So first thing that we're gonna need is this REXC100. This will gonna help us to control the temperature. And with this, we also need a K-type thermistor in order to do the temperature monitoring. Then we're gonna need a SSR, solid state relay. And make sure it is, it is DC to DC, not AC to DC, because all the functioning are in DC current. So get a DC to DC one. And this is important in order to make RE xc 100 act as a temperature controller and then we're gonna need this pwm this is 12 to 24 volt dc motor speed controller this is necessary in order to control the speed of our air dc okay, motor okay so before we move further ahead i want to talk to you about one equipment that is under power and that co can be a subject of concern if we don't give eye on it so this is a power supply of my old a very old around 15 year old computer which i I'll take it out from it and rewire it so that I can use it as a power supply. Well, if I read the specification here, it has a max output of 19 volt 5 amp and at max it can put out like 90 volts of power DC current. So I think we can use this thing given the my assumptions and the calculation that I ran in my mind actually. So it can give like 19 volt of current. So which is not a concern because all the modules, all the component that we are using are between 12 to 24 volts. So that will be not be issue. And given that the max power that the motor gonna consume when we run it at the max, it's gonna take like three amps of power. So given that it can produce like five amps of power, so that uh, this thing, this power supply can fulfill the power needs of the motor. But the concern is what if we run both the things together? I mean, the hot tin and the motor. Well, that will not be a case in our PET machine because once a hot tin also need, need that like five amps of power. So that can this power supply will provide that. But given that once we reach the highest temperature, let's say we set a 210 degrees Celsius and we reach there, 
then the hot is not gonna need that much amount of power it can it only need the amount of power just to keep it hot at 210 degrees celsius and we also the motor we're not gonna run the motor at like its max load because that's gonna be faster and then our filament gonna be uh worse quality so we have we run it around like 30 percent of its total capacity so yeah i think this motor will work well the time will tell i have to still test this thing because i haven't tested i'm recording it before testing it so let's see if it's this thing gonna work that would be great otherwise i have to change the whole design of this thing because this power supply is like it's kind of compact to fit in inside our pd machine 2.0 so let's see Okay, so now it's time for wiring. As you can see it on your screen, there's a diagram of whole wiring chart is given to you. So you can follow this one to wire this whole thing and it's pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, so whole inner and outer assembly is done and now this machine is ready to use but there's one problem that we need to tackle first. Okay, so the problem is this wiring like you know REXE 100 works on AC power and so does our power supply which converts the AC power into the DC current and I don't want to like having two plugs to connect it to the AC power source. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these two wires and directly put it into these pins of the power supply and it's kind of ris risky but I will, I'm willing to take the risk. So let's see whether it's going to work or not and I hope nothing get cooked. So now it's time for testing let's plug this thing and i hope nothing i took so let's switch it on and it finally worked thank god so now let's produce some filament Well, you saw that? Yes, right there. I knew this was going to happen given that the hot end was hot at like 210 degrees Celsius and the heat was transferred into the plastic body so which is doomed to melt. So I have to find the solution now. Um, what's the best piece 
of material which can act as insulator and do not transfer the heat into the plastic body yes you're right a piece of wood so let's put it on Okay, so our pet filament is ready, so now let's print something truly amazing. Cheers. Well, it's just a water. I, I stopped drinking soft drink a few years back since then I haven't had a single bottle of any soft drink out there. It could be Coca-Cola, Pepsi or anything. I just stopped drinking, it's just too much sugar. So let's get back to the print quality right here. So I printed this bottle using the, our homemade PET filament and the print quality is quite good. I'm pretty surprised because in my previous attempt that I did long back when I first created this machine, and it was not that good but given that i think it could probably be the printer like i'm i, I used i've used elegu printer to print this one elegu neptune 4 so that could be the reason but given that this is a, one of the fine, finest print quality that i ever had using a homemade pet filament so it's pretty good i would say i would rate it like 9 out of 10 it's just so good smooth and super good so if you're wondering what are my print setting for this thing so the print setting are like uh so the print setting up were 260 degrees celsius it was the hot in temperature and 70 degrees celsius was the bed temperature and if you wonder what was the flow rate well before i tell you the flow rate let me tell you this it differed from bottle to bottle given that i i've used the, like the sprite bottle to make this pet filament and i found a like sprite bottle are generally thicker than the coca-cola bottle and so the, the Pepsi bottles might have the different thickness. So it depends upon the thickness of your PET filament. Given that I've used the Sprite bottle, so I, I've used a flow rate of 105%, 105%. But it could be different in your case because you might be using another bottle. Or you might be using some kind of bottle which was not a beverage bottle but can be an oil bottle or vegetable oil bottle. I don't know. Or might be a water bottle which are way thicker in comparison to soft drink bottles so it depends like on your bottle and what what's your thickness or wall thickness generally so yeah that's it so i think the print quality is pretty good given that the machine it was like a pretty good upgrade i faced few problems when after i printed it i found like this was not correct in the machine and this was not correct so i fixed that so if you want to download this machine you can check out the link given in description so i've given the product link in the description too so you can check them out if you want like the rec 100 and power supply and any other other stuff that i've used in this machine so uh, this was it thanks for watching goodbye see you in next video